Whitward will be performing his version of Solitude in E minor. Yeah, E minor, all right, yeah! All right, that all-star game was some of the most uninspired basketball I've seen in a while. Let's talk about it. So if you happen to tune in for the All-Star game over the past weekend, you might have seen what resembled somewhat basketball in a sense. Even before the weekend, I put up a small poll just to see what people's excitement level was for the All-Star break. And it was lukewarm, if I'm being kind. Nobody was really looking forward to this All-Star weekend. They went ahead and put on a show that lived up to people's non-expectations. Starting on Friday with the celebrity game, I didn't recognize the celebrities that were in the game. That's on me. I'm an old curmudgeon. I don't really pay attention to who's trending on Twitter these days. So it happens. As time goes on, you sort of fall out of touch with who's in the blogosphere and I'm okay with that. The only person who I recognized that wasn't another athlete was Jennifer Hudson. Do with that information what you will. It was fine for what it was. Micah Parsons put on a show. Puka Nakua was great. I like to see everyone out there having a good time. It's all in good fun. That game was always one of those things that I always forgot was on and then when it was on I went and looked at it like oh yeah this thing is on huh I caught the tail end of it and they tried to add like flames and four point lines and all this nonsense which I think is fine for a celebrity game it's supposed to be fun you're supposed to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks so I don't have a problem with them trying a bunch of random stuff it's not to be taken seriously it provided a little bit of entertainment and it did what it was supposed to do Now on Saturday night they had the Rising Stars Challenge which I thought was going to be dominated by Team Pal because that roster is stacked and maybe because they were so talented they thought that the competition wouldn't play up to their level. They sort of tried to coast a little bit but it was weird to see them get the drubbing that they did. They tried to come back towards the end but it didn't end up amounting to anything. They had two or three rookie of the year candidates on their roster. So I thought this was easy pickings for them. I really thought that they were just gonna blow teams out all the way to the end. And watching these games from the Rising Stars, I think because the G League team was trying so hard, I actually saw some shades of defense. I know, I know, I was just as shocked. But at the end of the day, it was somewhat competitive. The final was another blowout because as it turns out, the NBA players, even the early ones, are better than the G League players. And how crazy would it have been for the league, for the G League to take the tournament against the young rising stars? I don't care if it's their first or second years in the league. If you're in the NBA, the idea is that your talent level is miles ahead of anybody who even assembles a team, whether it be in the G League or not. So if the G League team would have took that trophy, there would have been a lot more commotion than already has happened on this NBA All-Star weekend. The skills competition was a little bit odd to me. I know everybody could do everything in the NBA these days, but watching people who don't play like skill positions try to do that sort of thing, it just felt awkward. The guys kept going the wrong way. They were blowing easy shots. It was just kind of strange. All entertainment purposes, but watching this just sort of felt like watching a bunch of kids learn the rules to a game that they had never played for the first time and fumble around until the end. I'm not mad at it, but I could have did without it. Next up, I got to talk about that three point contest between Sabrina and Steph. Oh wait, there was there was an actual three point contest. Uh, let's see what happened there. Um, the usual, people were lighting it up. 
I like the three point contest. You don't change the formula too much. You add a couple of extra scoring opportunities and the formula stays the same. It's still exciting to me to see these guys do it at the high level and for them to compete and get shots up. There's something so primal about when somebody's lighting it up and you keep seeing that ball go in that gets you a little bit hype every time. At least it does for me. I didn't think that the three point contest needed a tweak. I'm okay with the changes. Again, this is all for fun, so I'm not a stickler for trying to keep things the same or not touching the rules because at the end of the day, it's all entertainment. And for the three point contest, it's been solid for a while now. Just the idea of people trying to shoot it out to see who's the best three point shooter is loads of fun. I like when it was coming down to the end and Dame was just hitting shot after shot and you know he had to come up clutch to get the win and at the end he did in the Dame time celebration was just so high that's one of the better celebrations of all time i think i may or may not make a video about my favorite nba celebrations now the three-point contest between sabrina and steph actually saved the night actually saved the weekend for the NBA. I came into this thing hoping that Sabrina would at least be competitive and not only was she competitive, she almost took that thing. Steph had to get a higher score than anybody in the three point competition just to beat her. I do have to mention that she was playing with a smaller ball which was standard for the WNBA but still. I don't care what the size of the ball is unless she was shooting on like a nerf hoop or something that was still impressive for her to put up 26 and this is compounded by the fact that she put on that other historic three-point performance that got people sort of looking this was super exciting to watch i watched it a couple times just because there was a lot of admiration and respect between the two they both went out there and put on a show and it was competitive hats off to them for putting this one together i'm glad it wasn't like a slaughter and she only made like two threes and then steph just lit it up on the other side that would have been bad but props to her oh and another thing i forgot to mention is the three-point line she had the option to shoot from the WNBA three-point line and chose instead to shoot from the NBA three-point line, which to me is far more impressive. She actually had the option and they would have moved that line forward, trust and believe, but she took it upon herself to actually shoot from the NBA three-point line. She was money. on to the dunk contest and yeah it certainly was a dunk contest first i want to say props to jalen brown for even participating in the dunk contest because even though he didn't have the greatest performance he is probably one of the bigger names in the league and not many are willing to put their hat in the ring so just the fact that he even decided to join the dunk contest alone was pretty good for me mac mcclung did his thing i think his first dunk should have been his last dunk that was the best dunk of any of the dunks by far all night i really wish he would have saved that for the end to set the house on fire the funny thing was when jalen brown went to dunk they completely didn't show it on the broadcast i had to rewind it like five times because i thought i missed something nope they just straight up missed the dunk i think that was just indicative of what this all-star weekend had been all along just a whole bunch of missed opportunities he did all right i think the dunk over for Kaisen that would have been a lot better if he was guarding his face the entire time. It was funny because it looked like he jumped and he forgot that's what he was supposed to do and then he remembered at the end and tried to bring it all together which I think was way worse. I think if you do that you jump and you forget to cover your face you either play it off like you're doing a celebration at the end or you just don't do that at all. What he did was end up in this weird purgatory where he was sort of covering his face and sort of trying to do it at the end after he remembered it it was weird but again props to him for being the biggest name in this dunk competition and then mac mcclung the g leaguer who can't even get a roster spot in the nba is dominating the slam dunk competition in the most quote-unquote athletically prime generation that we've ever seen which is completely hilarious to me
um i thought it was funny i remember they asked him at the end whether or not he'd be back in the dunk contest next year before we leave tonight is there a chance that you would give us the opportunity to witness a three-peat next year I'd have to think about it. Um, I'd never say never, but I'll think about it. Like, buddy, I know this is huge for your name and likeness and everything that you got going on. If they invite you back, you're coming. It's just a smart business decision. Having your name in and around the dunk competition for so long keeps you relevant. So yes, he's coming back no matter what he tried to say. You play coy because it gets people wondering, but we all know that if they invite him back, he's coming back i hope that if he keeps doing well in these dunk competitions that more and more stars will be like all right we're letting the g league guys take this thing or they should invite more g league guys in and then people in the nba these guys are so quote unquote competitive if you have the g league taking over your dunk competition stars should want to get out there to do something about that all in all the dunk contest went back to Meh. Mac McClung brought it back last year. Incredible hype. Super fun. We hadn't seen anything like that since the Aaron Gordon, Zach Levine dunk contest. And uh, I was glad that there was some sort of electricity. This year it didn't have the storyline. He didn't come out of nowhere. We were expecting something better from him. And even him at his average was miles better than what the NBA players were doing. The only problem I see with the dunk contest is the lack of creativity. I know these guys are wizards and savants in regular games, but when it comes down to getting creative with dunks, I haven't seen a lot of creativity and that's what's missing, honestly. Bringing out whatever celebrity guests and wearing whatever retro jersey. Everybody does this thing now where you wear somebody's jersey or you bring out some random celebrity and you jump over them. That's been done so many times now. The idea is tired. We need more creative ways to get dunks in here and it's not just wearing a costume that's not doing it. The creativity lies in the dunk itself too. So yes, you can wear the costume, you can imitate the dunk, but get creative with it. Just the small thing that Mac McClung did where he jumped over somebody he tossed the ball to himself caught it and did a reverse slam that was the best dunk all night because it was creative he did it with authority and it was something that we had never seen before that's the kind of thing that keeps the dunk contest live in my opinion indy's a great host city but i didn't necessarily feel their engagement with this whole thing and it's not their fault this dunk contest hasn't been exciting for a while so i can see why they wouldn't be enthused about anything that's going on but I don't know if I'm in the crowd, I'm selling it, bringing the energy just because, you know, I'm part of the spectacle itself to hopefully amp these guys up to get a little bit something. But I don't blame them for being a little bit mellow when the whole thing was going on because they didn't really have much to cheer for. So yeah, uh -uh. dunk contest was what it was, what it has been for a few years now. But what people need to do is get creative, please. All right, the big game, the one that everybody was waiting for. <laughs> now, it's bad enough when these teams in the All-Star game are putting up points at will and throwing up threes, it's scoring a million points in these games. It's even worse when it's a blowout. The highest scoring is boring enough, but if in the last like minute or two, it's somewhat interesting because you don't know who's gonna win, that at least keeps you somewhat engaged. This started as a blowout it ended as a blowout they scored a bunch of points and i couldn't tell you anything interesting that happened oh damian lillard hitting a couple of half court shots was pretty exciting like even if they do that in practice you know those clips go viral of 
them warming up and hitting half court shots for some reason that's always exciting i don't know why he was hitting them with consistency too i could watch guys hit half court shots all day long so i have no problem with him launching those from a half court and burying them problem is the rest of the game the whole game was like that take it down drive it kick it out another three fast break launch a three open man launch a three uh, uh, i don't know what the stats are i need to look this up there were probably a quarter of the dunks compared to threes attempted in this game if the numbers aren't where i think they are that just shows how uninteresting the dunks that they did were because all i remember was people jacking up threes and i didn't even realize that cat went off for 50 points in that game i think there was probably four or five players who had like 30 points and honestly you didn't even realize that their scores got that high because the things were just happening it was just an unintelligible mess of bad basketball it was a manila folder on a beige wall just boring they booed damian lillard for getting the all-star game mvp damian lillard Honestly, I didn't know if you wanted to be the MVP of this game. It's like the ultimate participation trophy, really. They should have just gave it to Halliburton because why not? Give the fans something to cheer for. It certainly wasn't this game. I think the thing that would probably fix the All-Star game is make it a charity event. Make them have to play for a certain charity. Oh, you don't want to win? Oh, I guess you just don't care about those starving kids in your home state, huh? Hmm, so much for NBA cares. I think if you gave them an extra incentive or, you know, do it like the end season tournament. I don't know, make the winning team all get 100K. It's something, some type of incentive because these guys are not incentivized. It's also funny to see that the two most dominant players in the NBA can barely even dunk a ball with nobody in front of them, which is absolutely hilarious. And don't get me wrong, there have been prime elite players in the past that haven't had the best ups and they haven't really been above the rim players which is fine these guys are not like those guys because they have the height and they have the stature to do so the best players in the game didn't care so since they didn't care i didn't care either i could go on and on about the all-star game and its problems but i think i'm gonna stop because if i keep going on i'm just gonna give myself a headache so that's gonna do it let me know what you guys think if you even tuned into all-star weekend because if you didn't you didn't miss much anyway thank you for watching leave a like if you feel so inclined and i'll catch you guys on the next one